tonight. I'm glad you didn't record that. <laughs> appreciate you. Psalm number 52. Uh, beginning with verse number 1. The Bible says, Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, Selah. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place, and root thee out of the land of the living, Selah. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree. In the house of God, I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for the opportunity to meet together tonight in your name. I just ask you to bless our time together. Lord, please empty me of self and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help us to get locked into your word. And Lord, uh, just bless our, our prayer time together as well. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of the message tonight is Just Give It a Little Time. Just Give It a Little Time. The first thing I want you to notice is there are times where... Uh, call it what you want, uh, where the bad guys, or uh, you might, or, or evil in general, or wickedness, seems to be winning. Okay, there are times where it seems like evil is winning. Okay, where bad guys are getting away with it. Right? Seems like they're getting away with it. Uh, in our day, it seems like everyone basically saying with their life and, with, and even with their mouth most of the time, I can live however I want, uh, you know, you can't judge me, it's none of your business and all this, but they seem to be saying, it, it's like it's implied, I can do whatever I want, I can go wherever I want, I can say whatever I want, I can live however I want and get away with it. It's like that, that it's like that's implied in what they're saying, isn't it? It's like I can do this and nothing's going to happen to me. And what they're actually implying there is that they are in charge. They are, they are basically assuming that they call the shots, that there's not an overriding power on the universe, that there's not someone who's governing, in the words of Benjamin Franklin, in the affairs of men. He was aware of that. Now, it's like they're, it's like they're not aware of that. And so uh, the psalmist here is asking a question to this bad guy. In verse number 1, the first part of it. He says, Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? You might be mighty right now. And, and, and listen, when you think of Goliath, I mean, the guy was mighty, was he not? Was he not massive and huge? And nobody could stand up to him. And nobody going to touch him. He was at large and in charge. But a little, God used a little bitty shepherd boy to, to end that man. I mean, think about that. And, and so if we were looking at Goliath, we'd go, oh, oh, oh that is impressive. He's, he's mighty, and he's huge, and he's massive, and he's in charge. I mean, he's dominant, really. And I mean, who can stand up to that? Oh, yeah, God. <laughs> that man's not in charge. And so the, the psalmist here is, uh, is asking the wicked, you know, why, why boastest thou thyself in mischief? Why are you so proud of your mischief? Why are you, why are you bragging about getting away with those things, almighty oh man? So, first of all, there are times when it seems like the bad guys are winning or getting away with it. And for a while, they do get away with it. Just for a while. Uh, the second thing I want you to notice, that God has not changed. Amen. And he has not weakened. He has not. Look at the second part of verse number one. The goodness of God endureth continually. Has that changed him? I mean, this guy, this bad guy is boasting about doing bad things and getting away with it. And the psalmist is going, 
you do know God is good. And you do know that's going to clash at some point. You, you do know you're bragging about getting away with your mischief right now, but you do know there's a good God. And he doesn't like your mischief. <laughs> at some point, your mischief is going to collide with him. Because he's continual. He's not changing. He hasn't weakened. He's not, he's not going, oh, what am I going to do about this wicked, wicked guy? No, God already knows what he's going to do about that wicked guy. Uh, he is, he, the goodness of God endureth continually. It's the goodness of God that is going to clash with that wicked man at some point. That's why we're constantly trying to warn people, hey, please, you know, let's get right with the Lord. Uh, if you're lost, you need to be saved. And if you're saved and you're out of the will of God, you need to get in the will of God. Uh, you need to start walking with the Lord. Why? Because God is good. And at some point, you're going to run into that. <laughs> Uh, it'd be better if you were walking with it instead of trying to fight against it. Uh, it'd be a lot better if you were with his program and you were walking with the Lord because his goodness endureth continually. God hasn't changed and he hasn't weakened. He's still in charge. Yep. He's still very much in charge. Amen. Uh, I mean, when my, when my kids, if you, if, if, Okay, my six children, if you watch them run out here, and I stood out here, and they all tackled me. And, uh, you know, brought me down to the ground. And, and maybe they even legitimately got me down to the ground. And, and you know, hit me in the knees. Maybe Theron hit me in the knees, and I, I hit the ground. Does anyone in here have a question of who's still in charge of that fight? Anybody? Do you think they can take me? Just, just wondering. Uh, does anyone think they stand a chance? I, I might put up with it for a little bit. I'm even going to be playful with them because they're my kids. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have fun with that. But do, I mean, the wicked are fighting against God. Does anyone have any question of who's still in charge of that? I mean, come on. Who, who do you think is going to win? Oh, it, it's not even a contest. And, and it's funny, you could make this same comparison with the devil. Because while the devil is powerful and while he makes human beings, uh, uh, while, while we should be respectful of, of his power, so to speak, we should not treat it flippantly, let me put it that way, uh, he's nowhere near God. <laughs> he didn't, he's not even seen ballpark. It's like it's not even a good comparison. There's there's no way to compare it. The devil would love for us to compare him to God, but he's not even a comparison to God. So, uh, really, I mean, the fact that the wicked are allowed to get away with this for a while is a testament to God's patience and His mercy. That is all it is a testament to, because He's He's good, and at some point it's it's going to clash. God has not changed, nor has he weakened. Third thing I want you to notice, they love to run their mouth, and they love evil. It says in verse number 3, Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness, Selah. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. They're running their mouth now. There's coming a day God's going to shut them up. Yep. He's going to punch them right in the mouth and they're going to be shut up. We, 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 I mean, we as Christians, we tend to think that, that evildoers are getting away with it. They're not getting away with it at all. He's going to shut them up. Uh... <clears throat> I remember this guy in high school, and I don't even think about him very often, but uh, Johnny saw him in one of my old uh, yearbooks the other day. Uh, who was that? Was that Destiny that saw, that saw my picture in the yearbook? Posted it, and I'm right next to this guy in the yearbook. This guy ran his mouth all the time. I mean, really, he, I, I couldn't stand to be around him for more than five minutes because he was constantly, uh, this is going to sound somewhat crude, I'm trying not to be crude, but it was constantly your mama jokes all the time. I guess those were in style back then. Anything you said, uh, hey, I'm, uh, uh, can, can you hand me my shoe? Your mama. 
everything. I mean, just constantly ran his mouth. He thought he was better than everybody. He, th he, he, he was pretty good at basketball. He really was. I remember I played freshman basketball with him, and he ran his mouth all the time. Probably the biggest trash talker on the court on either team. I remember. Constantly jawing. Constantly. Uh, you know, we looked him up just to see how he's doing. I, I knew the last time I, I saw him, he, was, he had gotten into some drugs. And I was a little bit worried about where he was at in life. And we looked him up, and sure enough, he, he doesn't seem to have a very happy life. He seems pretty, he seems kind of broken. One post that I saw that he had made, he, he said something about being thankful for another day or something. I, I hope that was legitimate. I, hope, I was thinking, man, maybe the Lord has done something in his life or something. He still looks pretty wild, but, you know, maybe he's realizing... It, he definitely isn't running his mouth like he used to. He's still kind of arrogant, but you know what I'm saying? It's like someone's punched him in the mouth. It's really like someone put him in his place. It's got that feel to it. And, uh, you know, listen, these guys are going to run their mouths. The wicked are going to run their mouths, and they think they're going to get away with it. And one day, God is going to shut them up. That's basically what those verses say. He's going to come along, and he's going to have enough, and he's going to shut them up. Think about the yapping dog. Think about the little chihuahua who's sitting there and, and barking. Bark, you know how chihuahuas are. Most of them are so hyper, and they're barking all the time. And there's this big bull mastiff running around, and he's just like, Leave me alone, dog. Leave me alone, little dog. And then one bite, chihuahua is done. Right? That's how it goes. The little dog is yapping the whole time. The big dog finally has enough and ends the yapping. That's what. Let's reread those verses three through five. Look at that. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Selah. Thou lovest all devouring words. O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away. And pluck thee out of thy dwelling place. Where you're living, he's going to pluck you up from it. And root thee out of the land of the living. In other words, you're going to die. He's going to stop you from talking. He's going to stop you from running your mouth. He will root thee out of the land of the living. Uh, number four, God will deal with them. We looked at that. He's going to... He's going to root thee out of, the, out of the land of the living. He's going to pluck them out of their dwelling place. He's going to destroy them forever. Can I encourage you tonight? Just give it a little time. Just give it a little time. And it will happen. Just give it a little time. We, we tend to think God is dragging his feet with dealing with things and dealing with people. No, no. Just give it a little time. Just give it a little time. He's going to deal with all of it. He'll take care of all of it in his own good time. Number five, it will be public. It will be a very public thing for the righteous. It says in verse number six and seven, look at this, the righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. This will be a public example. It says in verse 7, Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, and strengthened himself in his wickedness. It says the righteous shall see and fear and shall laugh at this person that God is doing these things to. Hold your place in Psalms and turn over to Isaiah chapter 14 for just a minute. Very important passage. Look at Isaiah 14. Verse number 12. Isaiah chapter 14, verse number 12. This is the, uh, this is the passage where we learn that Satan's name before his fall was Lucifer. In fact, this is the only passage in the Bible where the name Lucifer pops up. But it says in verse number 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? 
How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. Basically the devil's running his mouth. Amen? Catch that? He's telling, saying a bunch of stuff that he's going to do. So he's running his mouth. It says in verse 15, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. You're, you're saying you're going to do those things. You're running your mouth. But you're going to be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That's what's going to happen to you, Lucifer. And it says in verse 16, look at this. And we'll, there are people who are going to see this happen. I'm, I'm assuming the righteous at the judgment are going to watch this happen. Look at verse 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? Is this it? Is this it? Really? This is the guy? Verse 17. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? Really? This is the guy? We're going to get to see that happen. If you're righteous, if you're saved, you're going to get to see the devil humbled right in front of us. You're going to, and, and that goes right along with what we're studying in Psalm 52. You're going to get to watch all those who followed the devil all their life, didn't want Jesus, rejected Jesus, did never turn to Christ. You're going to watch them get humbled right in front of us too. They were running their mouth the whole time. They thought they had it all under control. They were very wrong. They were very wrong. And one day God's going to show us and it's going to be very public. It's going to be in front of everybody. We're going to see it. Isn't that, isn't that very, like, very serious to think about? Very, uh, I think the word I'm looking for is grave. Very gravity. Uh, it's um, startling to think about that. It will be public for the righteous. God's going to deal with the devil, and he's going to deal with the devil's crowd. It says in uh, number six here in my notes, the righteous and the wicked are contrasted. They are compared in verses seven through eight. Look at this. He describes the wicked man. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength. He wouldn't choose God. He wouldn't make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. This was the man who, who just became more and more wicked, more and more devouring, more and more bad. And then it says in verse 8, here's what the righteous man, he says, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. There's a big difference there, isn't there? The wicked man is strengthening himself. The righteous man is counting on God. He's counting on God's mercy. He's counting on God to strengthen him. And these two are compared. Lastly, in conclusion, look at the conclusion the righteous man reaches in verse number 9. He says, I will praise thee forever. Number one, we're to praise him. We are to praise God. I will praise thee forever. Number two, because thou hast done it, trust him. We are to trust him. We are to believe it's already a done deal. Do we realize that? Guys, uh, in my lifetime, I have not seen the world get better. Uh, I have not seen it get brighter. Uh, I have not seen, I, I don't think we're in, going in good directions uh, worldwide, uh, nationwide. Uh, I think we're going in very bad direction. I think the world is getting darker and darker. I, get it, I think it's getting more and more corrupt. Um, I think we're trying to warn people and we're trying to turn people to Christ. And I think people are rejecting him over and over and over again. I don't think it's, I think we're going in a bad direction. I think we're kind of on a downward slope. That's what it feels like. It feels like we're fighting uphill. It really does. Um, you know, I, when um, you say, Brother Joe, what are you comparing? Well, as far as America is concerned, I compare it to, to maybe times in the 1880s when there was great revivals and people were turning to Christ and, uh, you know, uh, maybe the, the, uh, after World War I and, and the revivals that went on there and, and, and you know, 
even in the 1950s, there were some pretty good revivals that happened in there. And you know, you compare it to those times; those were good, uh, godly times. People turn into the Lord. It's it doesn't seem to be happening right now. I mean, COVID could have scared people to the Lord. It seems like everyone's just kind of strengthening themselves. It seems like people are re becoming more reclusive and, and turning away from God and getting away from Him even more, doesn't it? Yep. Well, here's the deal. No matter how it looks, we're to trust God that He has done it. Enough. It's already a done deal. He's going to deal with all of it. Uh, the next thing in this verse, we're to wait on Him. He says, and I will wait on thy name. We're to wait on him. We're to, we're to just, just give it a little time. Just give it a little time and he's going to deal with it. These things will come to pass. We're to wait on him. While we're waiting on him, we're to wait on him. We're to serve him and to do what he tells us to do. It says, for it is good before thy saints. Let's be confident in his goodness. We can be confident in God's goodness. Amen? I'm not very confident in people's goodness, but I can be confident in God's goodness. Uh, you know, the wicked are going to run into His goodness, which endureth continually. We can count on His goodness, which endureth continually. We can count on His mercy. Amen? So praise Him, trust Him, be confident in Him, and wait on Him. Just give it a little time, and this is going to come to pass. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity.